Hello everyone, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. This is John, and today we're finally going to get up to some serious medieval-style treachery. Uh, specifically, we're going to try and disinherit the Duke of Aragon, our son-in-law, Anzar. Um, to do that, we click on uh, the county that he controls, and then on the di Conduct Diplomacy button here in the, the left. We have several options in this screen. We could potentially just revoke his titles directly. However, revoking titles costs uh, prestige. Each time you revoke a title, uh, you'll lower your prestige. Um, so we don't actually have enough prestige to revoke his duchy or county. Uh, we can take his barony. However, that uh, might cause problems because it says right here that he'll just refuse. If we send the order, he'll refuse and uh, revolt against us. So we don't want to do that because his army is stronger than ours. Um, another thing we could do is if we had a claim on his land, we could grant him independence and then uh, declare war uh, for his land. Unfortunately, we don't have a claim on his land, so that wouldn't work either. Uh, the other thing we could do is assassinate him. Uh, we don't have the gold to do it, but if we did, uh, he would die and then leave his territory to his son, Galindo, our grandson. However, Galindo is of a different dynasty, so it wouldn't really help our house any. We'd also have to then kill Galindo, and that is not something that I am prepared to do at this time because he's just two years old, and I'm not quite that dark yet. So what we're left with is imprisonment. Um, if we put him in prison, we'll have some more options to deal with him. Uh, we've got a 51% chance of succeeding, and if we do, um, well, if we even try, our vassals and anyone in our realm will have a minus 40 opinion penalty. Uh, because they don't like it when you act tyrannical. They think maybe they're going to be next. Um, and they're probably right. So, um, you know, we right now have the option to stake the entire future of our realm on a coin flip. 51% chance. Um, and there's nothing to do it. Uh, but do it, because we need his troops. So... Send the message. And Ansar has escaped. He's raised his flag in rebellion. And we are in serious trouble now. Um, at this point, we're more or less screwed. Uh, our armies, uh, click on the military screen, are 658. And he has um, more than 1,000 troops at his disposal. So we have no chance of beating him. He outnumbers us two to one, at least. Uh, we do have an option, though. Uh, click on the Mercenaries tab, and we look uh, and see there are all sorts of troops that we could potentially hire. Uh, mercenaries have a gold cost. Uh, You've got to pay them a certain lump sum up front, and you also have to pay them a certain amount each month. And it's really important to make sure that you pay your mercenaries, because if you don't, they can turn against you and claim your lands. Um, in addition, mercenaries have uh, different, mercenary troop companies have different compositions, different uh, percentages of their troops that are light infantry, heavy infantry, pikemen, cavalry, archers, etc. Um, let's scroll down and see what options are available for us. Well, it looks like we can't afford any mercenaries whatsoever, which, if this were under normal circumstances, this means we're doomed. However, I have the Sons of Abraham DLC installed, so I have another option. Click on the Intrigue button and go down and borrow money from uh, Jewish merchants. This gives us 300 gold, and that will be enough to repay them to pay the mercenaries for a while um, while you have gold uh, that is loaned out 
your church vassals will dislike you. However, they already dislike me because I'm a tyrant, so it doesn't really hurt me that much. Uh, now, I don't want to hire one of these more expensive mercenaries, because I still have to pay the per month uh, rate. So I want to hire a cheap band. I'm going to go with um, the Saxon band, because they have a good mix of light and heavy infantry. Uh, generally, heavy infantry is better. So, hire them. And then I can also um, raise my personal levies. And now we should have more than enough troops to beat uh, the Duke of uh, Aragon. So, when your troops are uh, ready, you can draw a box around them and select all the ones in the type. Same tile. And there are things we could do. We could disband these units, which we don't want to do because, uh, you know, we just paid money for them. We could reorganize them. Uh, that brings up a screen that allows us to move units from one group to the next. Um, or we could merge the two units, turn them into one, which is what we're going to do. And then in this screen, we have other options. We can click this to go to the reorganize. Um, we want our troops in the... Uh, Let's see, we want to put uh, Ulf here in the center flank and then this guy in the side flank because Ulf is the, the most powerful commander. Uh, because we have low crown authority, we can also reassign commanders, but we don't actually have anyone in the kingdom who's better than Ulf. Uh, so that is what we want to stick with. And then uh, we could uh, split off a new unit or just divide the unit in half which we don't want to do either of those. We want our forces concentrated. Up here in the top left is the unit's morale. Uh, it's pretty low because mercenaries start at zero morale and then gradually increase over time. Uh, a unit loses a battle if it runs out of troops or if it runs out of morale. And so we, even with our superior numbers, are going to lose if we go into battle right now. So I'm going to right-click on Vizcaya to send my troops to march over there. And now, at last, time will be unpaused. Um, click on the date up here, and that starts time. And then we can uh, click on the plus sign to make it move faster. Yeah, see, Duke Aunt <coughs> Zar has 1,200 troops. Oh, okay. Our marriage proposal has been accepted, so we are going to have an alliance with King Louis. Uh, and then we've got another marriage proposal out that should go. Yep. And then uh, we also have an alliance with King Charles. Okay. So the way war works is you've got a war score um, that when you win battles and the like, you raise up to 100%. And then once it raises to a plus 100%, you win the, bat the war. And once it raises to zero or negative 100%, you lose the war. Oh. Okay, Prince Fortune has died a maimed cripple, which really sucks because we need to appoint a new heir. Okay. So as you can see, we haven't lost any battles yet, but our war score has gone down. That's because Duke Ansar is defending his territory, and he will gain war score every... over time... Uh, so long as the territory is not sieged. Um, we received also a call to arms message. Uh, if we refuse, we'll lose prestige and we're more likely to uh, um, have them not answer our call in the future. So we're going to accept, but we're not actually going to go to fight uh, because uh, I think that he can probably handle it on his own. And we don't have the troops to spare. Uh, so we're just going to hang out at the edges of the battle and not show up, which is probably considered dishonorable, but what are you going to do? Okay, so the Battle of Tefala, we have won. And then we're going to send our troops right-click into Duke Anzar's territory and fight another battle, and we're going to win that too. And now we're laying siege. Uh, basically, uh, to lay siege to a territory, you park your troops in the territory and you wait. Um, as time goes on, 
the morale of the defenders will decrease to zero, and then um, when it reaches zero, uh, that's the end of the siege. You take the territory, and that's it. So we just have to wait. Um, we should siege this territory and gain it faster than we lose war score on uh, for Duke Anzar holding the territory. And it's a real shame that Anzar did not uh, capitulate because it looks like uh, there's a revolt going on in uh, in the Umayyad territory, which means that this would be the perfect chance to declare a holy war. Okay, a random event has popped up, and this gives us a choice. Um, when With random events, you want uh, to... This gives you opportunities to change your traits and the like. Um, if we chose this one, we'd have a 20% a chance of becoming arbitrary. This one would give a 45% chance of becoming just. So the irony of this terrible injustice we're committing against Duke Anzar notwithstanding, we're going to try and uh, go with justice. And uh, we gained the just trait, which means our diplomacy and stuff increased. So he is just, even though he's an opportunistic um, vulture. Oh, and our grandson has become of legal age, so that's good. Uh, although his education was not great. And time continues to move on. The siege is almost done. And there we go. Uh, having successfully sieged a castle, uh, our war score has increased to 100%, uh, and uh, we have won the battle. So, uh, this screen uh, just shows you the progress of the war. Uh, different allies that you have will be down here. Um, and when they contribute to your war, uh, they gain prestige when it's over, uh, based on in proportion to their contribution. And then this shows a, a history of the different battles that over the course of the war. So we're going to offer peace. And offering peace gives us three options. We can either enforce our demands, which uh, will give us everything that we sought when we started the war, namely... Uh, Duke Anzar will be imprisoned, and he'll also lose a significant amount of prestige, which is fine, because that's what uh, we want. We'll gain some prestige off of that, too. Or we could offer a white peace, which means everything goes back to the status quo before the war was started. Um, we, The Duke would uh, lose some prestige, and uh, we would uh, have a higher opinion of him. Uh, whoever starts the war uh, loses prestige in a white piece. Uh, Duke Anzar technically started the war because he rebelled instead of being imprisoned, but of course uh, we started it by trying to imprison him unjustly. And then we could also surrender, which we don't want to do because uh, that would be ridiculous. Uh, we would lose a huge amount of prestige and uh, our realm's uh, crown authority would revert to low, and also we'd have to uh, abdicate to one of our relatives, whereas uh, Anzar would gain a huge amount of prestige. So we want to enforce the demands. Duke Ansar is imprisoned. We have won, uh, which is good, because our realm couldn't have survived. And ironically, Duke Ansar would not have survived uh, without you know, me controlling him. Okay, so now we can revoke his title, uh, and this, we can do it without the prestige or uh, opinion hit uh, for, because he rebelled against us. Um, however, we don't want to do that because we can only revoke one for free, and we want all of his titles. We could execute him, but that has the same... Uh, negative effect as uh, assassinating him. Namely, his heir would inherit and we would get nothing. Uh, we could ransom him uh, for 145 gold, but he doesn't have it. So what we want to do is banish him. And banishing him, uh, our other vassals will hate us for this. 
and it'll cost us 10 piety, but we'll get all of his gold and all of his titles. And that is what we want. So, Duke Anzar, you are banished. Now, the risk uh, for banishing someone is that they could go to a different court and then the ruler of that court could press claims on your land on their behalf. But for some strange reason, probably because he's our son-in-law, Duke Ansar fled Alto Aragon uh, to Navarra. So we banished him from his territory into ours. And we're going to let him stay there until the day he dies. Um, he's got claims on our land, uh, but uh, he doesn't have any power to pursue those claims. So let's take a look and see what we gained out of this treachery. Click on the military screen. You can see that our maximum total domain levy has increased to 2538. However, we can't actually raise those troops at the moment because most of them are dead. Uh, there are 315 total unraised troops at the moment. Um, those are the survivors of the various battles. Uh, over time, the unraised troop levies will increase. Uh, and when they reach the maximum, then uh, we'll be more in, uh, we'll be in better shape to pursue a war. Our vassal levies are 102 because we also picked up some new vassals, uh, but they're not significant part of our realm. So I click on this red button to dismiss the troops. Now, in theory, uh, I would be tempted to keep these mercenaries and declare holy war on this country right here. However, I am not confident uh, in our uh, chances of success. Uh, it's really a shame because we'll be wasting 150 gold, but I'm going to dismiss the Saxon band as well. Give them chance to recuperate alongside our troops, and hopefully when that's done, we'll have gained enough gold to rehire them, and then go after after, uh, after some of this territory belonging to, uh, to the Umayyads. And hopefully this realm will be broken up some more too, so that uh, we'll have a more chance of success. So until then, uh, good luck and good treachery.